Hey up YouTube, I'm Mary, thank you for clicking on the video, and I am very late with this video, I know, I had so many other things to do before making this, but I am here now, and Lucembo came back in the same year? What kind of world are we in? To put this into perspective, there hasn't been a Luna comeback in the same year since 2020 with Hash and Midnight. What a time to be alive. Lucembo is back with TTYL for their title track, and you I'll probably know the drill already, but we're going to break down this music video as much as I can to see what we can find. Now, if you do up liking this video, please do leave a like. It really does help support the channel and makes it easier for other theorists to find too. Your support on these videos really means a lot. That being said, if you like what I do here and you want to see more videos like this in the future, continue hitting that subscribe button. But let's begin this breakdown for Lucembles TTYL. And that didn't take long for us to make our first stop. We have a foot, and of the feet shots that we had in past music videos, this belongs to Yojin, who is running away from people dressed in black. As we saw at the end of the Girls' Night music video, Yojin was beamed by one of the invading ships. Instead of her just being vaporized, she seems alive, so perhaps she did just get teleported to a different plane. I say plane because of some other scenes that happen later in the video. And like we had at the end of Girls' Night, we have the other four members running in to save Yojin. Also, Vivi with the platinum blonde hair? After a year of her mentioning it, she finally has it. <laughs> and it looks so great. This lens flare is reminiscent of PTT, which the composer of PTT is here for TTYL. Hmm. Here we have a long exposure shot of the stars, which is what the Orbit logo is based on. Here we have the members of Lucembo reuniting, but if we slow down the rest of this scene and keep track of their shoes, we see that some of them have actually stopped and turned. Now this could just be where the director told them to stop, or it could mean something more. Yeah, I don't know. It's more likely the former though. Here is the new Lucembo logo. No longer bubbly or clean, we now have this sharp looking logo. Talk to you later. Ooh. We have Hyunjin in the reflection of the water, and she is viewed as upside down. This is likely to relate her to Cherry, who tends to be upside down, like her representative animal, the bat. Specifically Cherry, because in Lunaverse, she is considered as Cherry's twin, as can be seen in the So What music video. Not to mention that Cherry's representative color is purple on the RYB color wheel, which is the complementary slash inverted color to Hyunjin's representative color, yellow. This flash of a turquoise-like color is reminiscent of the flash of green we saw in the new Moon trailer back in 2020. Did you see it? Right behind Hyunjin, we see a human-like figure manifest behind her and walk to the left. Here we have Vivi in a restaurant with a rose choker. Roses, of course, are Kimlet's representative flower, as shown in PTT, but also a hint at the Rosaceae family for YYYY's defiance of Eden. Here we have Yojin with a rose strap. Here we have a wild go on with a chandelier above her. This is a clear reference back to her solo music video, one and only where there were scenes with her under these chandeliers. Or if you want a deeper cut, it could refer to the Luna Lightstick postcards, where each member was standing underneath a chandelier. As Heju does her little point, a hole appears around her, and then a flash of a shot of Vivi with her back towards the camera appears. 
here with Yojin and a mirror that has gems of moons, hearts, droplets, and rectangles. This gem kind of looks like a face. Here we have Yojin doing her best to secure a makeup commercial. Now, I'm no flower expert, but a quick Google reverse image search says that this flower could be a Transvaal daisy. They relate to Yojin. Orange is Yojin's representative color, and the daisy is her representative flower that was in PTT. Not sure what this is, but it, it's here. A nice transition to Hyunjin's reflection in the water. And she ate the flower, similar to how YY by Y ate roses to symbolize them biting Eve's apple, defying Eden. And this burn transition is similar to the one in PTT that cut to cherry, again using the twin and PTT. Here we have Hyunjin with a person on her nose. We can find out in later shots that this is actually Hyunjin as well. Just jumping and reaching out to something. To me, her jumping and reaching out reminds me of the scene in Egoist where Olivia Hay, now Heju, was hanging on to someone and fell. This could also refer to PTT again, where Kim Lip and Jin So reached out into the void. And here's the main reason why I said plain earlier. This type of sky is quite literally impossible in this world. The light of the sun, the moon, gas clouds, and the void of space being visible in a city? Nah, must be a different world. Here we have Heju on an AC unit, just like how Eve was in her new music video. Also, a black sphere approaches. As soon as Heju touches it, the black sphere becomes clear, like a bubble. Bubbles, like PTT? Here are the shots that were virtual angeled in here. Now we can clearly see that Hyunjin is in the same restaurant that Vivi was in. Here we have a clear view of Heju's HH ribbon tattoo, which people assume stands for Hi Hi, but I don't think there's been an official meaning for the HH. Also, you can just barely see her summer night tulip tattoo on her arm. Here we have the classic Luna trope of just look up, and we have a better view of this world. Here we have Gohan just standing in the middle, being circled by people. And here we have Vivi also just standing, looking up at fireworks and flying people. The flying people could be referring to all the flying moments throughout the existence of Luna, Jinso and Singing in the Rain, Heejin and Hi Hi, and some of the hash teasers, Kimlip and Gohan in Why Not, various other members in Hula Hoop, the actresses in Virtual Angel, Chew and Strawberry Rush, and you ready for this super deep cut? I've been waiting for a chance to include this. Starseed. Didn't think I'd ever pull that card, but here we are. Here's Yojin with a camcorder, similarly to how Vivi had a camcorder in the Girls' Night music video. Here we have Hyunjin with some goldfish. Goldfish can also be seen in Yojin's Kiss Later music video. Then we transition to Heju with some betta fishes. Bettas, specifically blue bettas, are Jinso's representative animal. Interesting. The goldfish from Yojin's Kiss Later music video and Jinso's betta. Now I've actually made a few videos back in the day that talked about how Yojin and Jinso were related. Essentially, using the RYB color wheel, we see that Jinso's representative color, blue, is the complementary slash inverted color 
of Yojin's representative color, orange, and them potentially having similar powers. In the video, me saying, in Jinso's singing in the rain music video, the description reads, Haso, who always seems to cause rain wherever she goes, and the youngest member, Yojin, who hops around everywhere like a noisy frog, joined along. What if it's not hops around everywhere, but teleports? around everywhere. Teleporting of course refers to how we see Jinso and the other members of Odd Eye Circle suddenly appear in various places. This teleporting we see is just time manipulation. Relative to them, time goes slower, and thus to us, they appear to teleport. A little off topic, but fun to talk about. However, in Yojin's case, it seems to be a forced teleport, as seen in the Girls' Night music video, and now the supposed continuation of that in this video. Ha, you can actually see the camera gimbal on the fishbowl. And speaking of Odd Eye Circle, we have three bettas floating around Heju. This could be referring to Hai Hai, where the three members of Odd Eye Circle met with Heju and sent her near the other YY by Y members. This scene with Hyunjin is awfully reminiscent of PTT, again, with Kimlip holding that black hole. So, if we take what a black hole is made of, a sun, and say that Hyunjin is eating the sun, this seems like references to Sing in the Rain, Egoist, and Virtual Angel, where Jinso mentions the sin of either absorbing or swallowing the sun. Here we have Goan, and as she touches the chandelier, an apple tree manifests behind her, and it's also on fire, this most likely referring to the Garden of Eden. Then we have that flash of green, again similar to the New Moon teaser. Now we have Heju doing a little runway walk with the three bettas around her. Here we have someone with a cat eye. Now Hyunjin's representative animal is a cat. So one would assume that the person with the cat eye is Hyunjin. Now we have the members in these black and white outfits. And now you can see that Hyunjin outfit from earlier. Here we have Hyunjin sitting at a table, which reminds me of Eve sitting at a table in the Not Friends music video. But now in the background, we have multiple Hyunjins doing Hyunjin things like playing with a fish tank, peekaboo, and just running around. Heju has something embroidered on her shirt. It might just be the brand, but all I know is that it starts with a B. Here we have Yojin reaching out to a blob of liquid, very reminiscent of PTT with Cherry and Eve. Here we have Yojin, Goan, and Vivi in this shot, which is also interesting because in the Star music video, we had Yojin and Goan together, but we also had Vivi with Goan. Here we have Vivi with balloons, which could also be referring to a couple pictures from her solo album, which could also be seen in a few episodes of Luna TV. God, I wish this boycott could end. This is literally the members playing Red Light, Green Light. Now we go back to the start of the music video, but now we have all the members on the floor, slowly waking up. Here we have Goan trying to capture her representative animal, the butterfly. At least, she's trying. There was nothing really in those virtual angel shots, just flashes with different colors. Here we have a submission for the top 10 Luniverse Skies Part 2. 
Now we have all members in front of what looks like the gate from the Girls Night music video. As the members approach the gate, hands can be seen reaching out of it. Here we see that there are actually 12 hands reaching out of the gate. 12, of course, most likely representing the 12 members of Luna, even though we have five of them here. Now we have Hyunjin standing on top of a very reflective platform on this roof, which could refer to Eve's new music video. And that little click you hear at the end is very similar to how a cassette tape recorder would sound when it ended, just like in the Girlfriend music video. But yeah, that was my full analysis of Lucembo's music video for TTYL, and it was pretty good. Unfortunately, we didn't get more of the acting sequences like we had in Girls Night and Sensitive, most likely because this was a different production company that made this video. Girls Night and Sensitive both had Studio Goyu, but now we have Sunny Visual back again who was the production company that did the Not Friends music video as well as all of Chu's music videos so far. The big differences that I can see in these production companies handling Lucembo's project so far is that I see that Studio Goyu has been focusing more on building Lucembo's new world and every once in a while hinting at their old world. With Sunny Visual, the tides have shifted and they have focused more on Lucembo's old world, really trying to hit our nostalgia with so many more references back to past music videos, especially PTT era content. This doesn't mean it's a bad music video, it just means for me, looking at it through an analytical lens, it feels like I'm watching PTT and not Friends music video, but reskin. Like I don't really find myself excited about most parts of the music video because I've already seen most parts in past music videos. Other than seeing the members do their thing, the only part that genuinely catches my interest is the scene with the gate with the hands reaching out because it was something we have never seen before, but that only took up roughly 11 seconds of the video's runtime. Then we look back on Lucembo's past music videos and we have minutes of pure story to fully captivate the viewer who are invested in these unique stories. But that's enough of me ranting about some of the quirks of this music video. All in all, it's still a really solid song, but if I missed anything, do let me know in the comments. I'm sure the more times I watch the music video, I'm gonna realize more and more what can connect or have connections that I don't realize now. So if you do wanna be here for when I do realize those things, hit that subscribe button, and if you like the video, drop a like. It really does help support the channel and allows other theorists to find the video too. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.